Good morning, church, and welcome to worship. You may notice something a little different today, and that is Pastor John and me, Pastor Laura, were wearing masks because some of our youth are here. This is Youth Sunday, and truly, it is one of the greatest joys of the church to see young people sharing their faith and leading worship. You're in for a treat today. You won't see much of me and Pastor John. You will see a lot of our young people. If they're gonna be standing up here, you're gonna see them in masks if they're together. But if they're individual, we're gonna let you see their faces. So enjoy worship today. Hello, church. My name is Ryan Tavares. We're so happy that you're joining us today because today's worship service is going to be led by our youth ministry. We're very excited to get the opportunity to lead y'all in prayer, worship, and today's scripture. So before we get started, please feel welcome and leave a comment either on our YouTube, Facebook, or any other way you might be joining us today. With all of that said, let's prepare for worship. Worthy of every song we could ever sing Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Oh, we live for you. And hold. Shira and I am Anna Hykus and together we will be leading you in our call to worship. Today's reading comes from Psalm 41 through 4. I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the slimy pit and out of the mud and mire. He set my feet on a rock and gave me a firm place to stand. He put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see and fear the Lord and put their trust in him. Blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord. Amen. When you're down and you're out and you don't think you have a friend, when you're lost in the doubt, and you can't see what's around the bend. Just hold on, don't turn around. Keep on walking, don't lose heart. Cause I am here, I am here. Wherever you are, wherever you are. When the rain is falling, there's no silver lining. And you just can't seem to find the light. When you need a reason to help you keep believing, let my love be your blue sky. 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 Don't you know that I know life can be 
so hot it makes you wanna give up. But don't you know over the horizon, the sunny day you're looking for is written right here in my love. So just hold on, don't turn around. Keep on walking, don't lose heart. Cause I am here, I am here, wherever you are, wherever you are. When the rain is falling, there's no silver lining. And you just can't seem to find the light When you need a reason to help you keep believing Let my love be your blue sky Your blue sky Your blue sky Hi kids, it's Leanne Clemens here with you all again. I'm so glad to be worshiping with you today. Waiting, oh my, waiting is not fun and it's hard. We have to wait for dinner when we are so hungry and we want food now. We have to wait until it's time to go play outside when we want to go out now. We have to wait until we can be with all of our friends all together when we just want to do that right now. Waiting is hard. It takes patience. We have a really special treat today. Leah Hykus and her hedgehog, Acorn, are going to teach us a little bit about patience. Watch and listen. Hey guys, so today I'm going to be teaching you guys a little about patience. And so this is Acorn the Hedgehog's cage. And so when I wake him up, I have to be patient with him. So Acorn is nocturnal. And so he is not used to being up during the day. So I'm going to wake him up. So all I do is take his little box off. And so I'm not sure if you guys can see him, but he's over here and he's in a spiky ball. And so why he's in that is because he just woken up and he's really grumpy. So what I do is I just give him some time to wake up and maybe he'll start running. But while we're while he is waking up, I'm just going to tell you guys a little bit about patience and why you should be patient with maybe your family members, your siblings, um, just like life in general. So being patient is pretty hard sometimes because sometimes you just want to do to do stuff. You know, you want to just get it over with and you know it's really hard to be patient and I've had to learn so much how to be patient especially with acorn and so when being patient all you have to do is think about if I was let's say waking up and being grumpy I would want some time to wake up and you know you have to be patient with that and so honestly just put each other like put yourself in someone else's shoes this way you can learn how to be more patient and so now I can see Acorn and he is slowly moving about his area. He hasn't really made it across his blankie, but he's peeking his head up and all that stuff. So that's very good. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm going to give him a little bit more time. Usually it takes him like two minutes, maybe three to wake up. So we'll see. So I'm going to get his bed out. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my hand and I'm just going to lightly put it in front of him. This way he can smell it. He may jump a little bit because, you know, he's just waking up. There he goes. He jumped. I kind of startled me. But, um, so he needs a little bit more time, so that's okay, too. now I'm letting him see my hand again and this time he's he's a little bit more you know startled but he's okay with it 
Like he's not curling up into a ball, he's just sometimes squeaking and stuff like that. And Acorn's almost a year old. I think he was born in November, maybe October, so. Almost a year, a little bit more than a half. And so then, after being nice and patient with him, he's up. Wasn't that fun to meet Acorn and hear all about how patient Leah has learned to be with him? I challenge you this week to be patient. Try. Ask God. He'll help you. Can't wait to worship with you next week. Be safe. God bless you. Hello. My name is Evie Shira. And I'm Zachy Garza. Today, we have the privilege of leading you in prayer this morning. And at the end of both of our prayers, we invite you to join us in saying the Lord's Prayer. Dear Lord, you have shown us your limitless and unfailing patience time and time again. I pray you give us the strength for patience for the big things to come and the little things along the way. Teach us to be patient with life, others, and ourselves. Also, Guide us to trust your timing and plans for us. Amen. Dear Lord, today we pray for those that are sick, for those without jobs, for those that need shelter, and for those that are worn out. We lift them up to you, our loving provider. Help us to be patient and continue to pray as often as we can. May we support our local authorities, our parents, our school boards, our teachers, and all that are working hard to keep us safe. Amen. Our Father, who, who art, art in heaven, heaven Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Hello, my name is Chase Brown, and I would like to talk to you about how your, your giving is such a blessing to this church and how it benefits both our church and our community. Last Sunday, teachers and students received a blessing from the pastors as we prepared to go back to school, and I want to tell you how much it meant to us. I'm grateful that, that this church is praying for me, and I'm grateful that the small gifts you gave as we got ready to go in a very different school year. The sticker both the students and teachers received are a great reminder of God's love and the love of this church family. It's your giving that made it all possible. Your giving encourages students like me, as well as those who teach us. So on behalf of all the students and teachers that are part of this congregation, I would like to say thank you. nothing worth more that could ever come close no thing can compare your The sweetest of loves when my heart becomes free and my shame is undone. Your presence, Lord. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come.
come to the time where we're going to talk about the fruit of the spirit that is patience. It grows in thorny situations like a bed of agave. But the, the word that I wanted to share with you before we hear what our young adults and our teens have to teach us about patience is taken from the agave plant. It's one of my favorites. It's a native of South Texas. It thrives without needing a whole lot of attention or water. It doesn't need any of that. It can just go great gangbusters. And one of the things that always speaks to me about this plant is how once the century plant flowers, that plant is done. It only gets to bloom once in its life, and then its life is over. Now, it can take 30 years to have one bloom, but then it's gone. And so whenever you see agaves, they'll have pups, what they call pups. This is a rather large pup, and there are smaller ones over there. They'll, ha they'll be surrounded by their family. Uh, Agave is a family plant, and church is a family, and we thrive. We thrive no matter the soil, no matter the place. Uh, we're natives to whatever place that God sends us, and we are also called to look out for the next generation, to not just care about the life that we're living, but to foster a kind of nursery for others to grow up in the faith and become strong. And so I'm excited for what the young people of this church will be teaching us today, I've listened to these messages that they've sent, and I am amazed, and I am growing by listening to them. So thank you for supporting and encouraging our young people to not just grow in their faith,
but to grow in their leadership and for creating a place where they can put down deep roots and they can thrive and they can start to encourage and inspire others and plant those seeds that will flourish the kingdom of God even further. Enjoy what they have to say about the fruit of the Spirit called patience. Good morning, church. My name is Sydney Ramon, and today I will be reading 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 and 5. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Now in this scripture, Paul is talking about a selfless and perfect love with the understanding that while we are not perfect, we are made perfect in Christ. And it is through the Holy Spirit that we have been given the power to love as Christ loved us. And so what does this love look like? Patience. Now looking to the world around me, I moved into college in the middle of a global pandemic. And this came with a lot of fear and frustration and admittedly, a little bit of anger. But as I spent time with the Lord, as I meditated on the situation I found myself in, I began to realize that maybe God is calling me to take a breath, to sit in this moment and to be patient, not just with myself, not just with this pandemic, but with those around me, with the people who are fighting these battles and these struggles and overcoming these obstacles that we may not even know about. This scripture serves as a reminder of the love that God shows me every single day, but most importantly, the responsibility that I have as a Christian to extend that same love, that same kindness, that same patience to those around me as we go through this together. Thank you. Hello, church. I am Mary Dillon. I'm going to read Ephesians 4, 2. It says, be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, frame with one another in love. What is patient? Patient. To have patience is to have humble heart and be unified. But we tend to be impatient, which shows our weakness. For me, the meaning of patience is waiting for the right time and place. For unity with God plans and receive them with a humble heart. For example, it was I was patient when I was waiting to be adopted. To, before we, I become adopted, I was in the foster care with different families in different cities. And we need to take care of our time, visit patiently and humbly, because God always knows the right time to deliver us. And his blessing right now, it can be difficult to be patient with our neighbors, our jobs, our loved ones, our country, our, because we are isolated. Through his son, Jesus Christ, patient creates a humble heart. And that's something is to always remember to hold on to. God bless and be patient. Good morning, church. My name is Isla Davila, and today I will be reflecting on Romans 12, 12 with you. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. In times of uncertainty and hardships within one's life or season, it can be hard to connect with one's faith. In the uncertain times that we are all experiencing, it can be especially difficult. This scripture is meant to remind us to be patient and to continue to stay positive in even the toughest of seasons. God will always be there in the hardest moments of our life, even if, feel, if we feel he's not there. God hears us and knows what we are going through and will help us persevere through it. Personally, I know that in the moments when I lost my grandfather, I felt at a loss for words. It felt like I was going to lose faith in everything. It was quick and un unexpected. It had hit me at a point when I was not at the greatest mindset. The person who I had previously gone to for guidance and advice was no longer there at the point when I needed him the most. 
What helped me was continuing with church and talking to others within our community about my experiences and hearing what others have gone through that were similar to me. It helped that at the moment we had started confirmation. The experiences of those in the church that were brought to the youth each week to speak to us helped me understand my faith and why it was important to me. From that point to the present, I understood that through trial and tribulation that my experiences are what helps me understand and help others today. It may be hard and long, but every moment that we endure in affliction will help us grow stronger within ourselves and our faith. There are different ways to help aid you through hard times, such as prayer. Prayer is something that is personal and is recognized as a conversation between you and God. Whether you are giving prayers of thanks and praise or asking him for you to be put on the right path, God hears your words. I hope this resonated with you. Thank you and have a great day. Hi everyone, I'm Hannah Kelly and today I'll be reading Colossians 3.12. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, Clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. So this verse is always important, but especially now during these unprecedented times. For the past six months, um, I think we've all been able to realize just about how low our patience levels are. Um, all of us have been coddled up in the same homes, with the same people, with the same objects, and we've really been able to understand that every day is the exact same and we need to make um, the most of every single day. Um, so throughout this, these past six months especially, um, I'm sure you've been able to tell the, that in order to stay um, and live a peaceful and stressful life, um, patience is truly key. Um, I think it's especially hard in today's day and age where everyone kind of lives in a like a quick culture kind of say so now you can order anything on a mobile app and your food will be ready in three minutes um, so this is kind of hard with regards to everything else which doesn't always go your way um, and doesn't always finish and get things done really quickly so i think it's very important that we all stay extremely patient um, and stay very calm um, in order to live like a stressful free life. Um, in this verse, um, Paul also tells us to use compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, along with patience um, in our daily lives. And I think it's very important that we practice these things in order to do them naturally. Because for me, um, I have to think about waking up every day and being kind and being compassionate when truly it shouldn't be that difficult. Um, so I think that by practicing more and more every day, we'll be able to realize the wonderful life God has given us and um, just how lovely it is when you truly look at it. Hey FUNC, I'm Christian Garza. I'm a sophomore at UT Austin and I'm studying biochemistry with a business minor and I was part of the FUMC youth ministry for seven years. Hi there, my name is Vince Tavares. I'm a sophomore at the University of Texas at Austin studying economics, and I was also a part of the FUMC youth ministry for seven years. The verse I'm going to be reading today is 2 Peter 3 9, and it says, The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. So when I read this verse, what I think of is that the Lord is always going to keep his promises that he makes to you. It's just that it's not going to come at the times that you specifically desire. He's going to wait for them to, for the moments to come when it's going to be most meaningful, most learning, um, most loving to you. And so he doesn't want you to perish in the time that you're waiting for the promise to happen. He just he wants you to stay calm. He wants you to say uh, like not fret and he wants everyone to come to repentance which is another way of saying to just engage in a closer relationship with the lord and to have closer trust with jesus um and so when uh in the verse that peter said um he also wanted the he wanted people to follow god's plan to have more people to place their trust in him and he wanted them to not see the delay of Christ's returns as like evidence 
of God as as evidence of tardiness, but instead he wants it to see it as evidence of his loving patience that he has for us. And so that's what I think about when I read this verse. All right, I'll be reading Proverbs 16, verse 32, and it says, Better a patient person than a warrior, one with self-control than one who takes a city. So I think what God is trying to tell us here is that he would rather see us uh, be patient and calculated in everything that we do than be brash and irrational and make quick decisions. Um, when he says, one better a, a patient person, one with self-control than one who takes a city, he doesn't want us to be uh, irrational in doing things that are going to end up hurting us in the long run. Um, it is, you know, it can be difficult, especially in stressful times, to be patient because our emotions can get the better of us. Um, especially with everything going on in the world right now related to COVID, it's easy to get caught up in our emotions instead of thinking things through the way that God wants us to. But we can be better than that. Um, we can control our emotions and we can be greater than the warrior um, as long as we uh, practice patience and have faith in God. So I think that's what this verse is trying to tell us. Just stay patient and have faith that, um, have faith that everything that we're doing through God is going to turn out all right. Um, and the general theme of both of our verses is of patience. And, of course, with these uncertain times, the past five, six, seven months, whatever, how long, however long this virus has been going on for, um, we just know that everything is eventually going to work out and everything's going to return back to normal. But for now, we just have to stay calm and stay patient because good times are going to come and we just have to wait for it. And I know with uh, all the kids going back to school, with virtual education online, with um, Account ISD or Edinburgh ISD, we just know, even though it will be different, just keep um, keep high hopes and have faith that everything's going to work out in the end. Yeah, absolutely. I think for all you kids going back to school, this is definitely going to be a new challenge for you, but have faith and patience. Um, have faith that what is going on is still God's work and be patient with your parents, with your teachers, with your siblings, every, everybody is going through this together and it's certainly different than anything we've, we've been used to so far. Uh, but look at, look at it as a challenge and uh, try to strengthen your faith through it. Thank you. Have a good one. Welcome. Okay.
breathe on my weakness for all I want is to be like Jesus I don't have much but what I have is yours to use so make my whole life your Hello, my name is Stephen Dillon. And I'm Leah Hykus. And before we close today's worship service, we just wanted to say thank you on behalf of our youth and young adult ministries. We are grateful and honored to have led today's worship service. And as always, your support, prayers, encouragement, and patience means a lot to us. Today, we have heard our young adults and our youth encouraging us to stay patient. It's a gift to practice a way to honor God and others. May you be encouraged today with God's love and peace. What a wonderful celebration of worship. What a joy to have young people who are so passionate about Christ and willing to lead us in worship. It is great to see the leadership in these young people as they grow in the faith. Indeed. Um, so thank you, youth. Thank you for leading us in worship. And all, to all the family of God, go in peace and may the love of Christ and the patience of God be with you. Amen. Amen. upon you and be gracious to you the lord turn his face to